Hey everybody, Mike Peterson here. New audio show thanks to the Smoke Free Radio Network and Demetrius. It is vaping and the mic, as in this microphone that I'm hiding behind this huge, god awful, huge pop filter. I wanted to get a small one when I was down at the store, and all they had was this, this like, oh my god, you could hide a Mack truck behind this thing, but that's okay. The main thing is, we're, we're here this evening. We're going to be talking about some information and some current events that are going on as we are looking at everything on more of a national level. And after we get through kind of like the news that I want to talk about, tonight we have Josh from Vaporized in down in Mississippi. He's going to be joining us live on the phone. I'll give him a call. That's as long as I can make sure that everything is working correctly, <laughs> if I can keep everything just moving right along. All right. The The first thing that I want really to kind of hit on this evening is the FDA ANPRM. Now, I tried to log into the website a little bit ago, and it was flooded. It, it was just taking like forever in the day to get anything to come across on it. So I didn't do that. But it, it, there's the FDA and the government has put together a website to collect comments about flavoring because the ANPRM stands for Advanced Notification. Boy, is that horrible or what? My, my brain just absolutely went out the door. But what they want to do is they want to actually regulate flavors. You know, it's advanced notification for rulemaking is what they're going to do. Now, I had checked on Friday on the website, and there was only 16,000. Now, I looked at it last night, and there was already over 26,000 comments that were happening. And so I know that it, it is there, and it's gaining more traction because I know a lot of people are beginning to talk about it. A lot of people are opening up and saying, hey, you've got to get this out there and really, really start to make it work. So if you go to the ANPRM website for the FDA, and when I'm done, I'll put a link down here in in Facebook that you can check out. Um, and I'll, there's some other ways that we can get to it. But in the upper right-hand corner, if you click on the comment now section you'll be able to leave your own personal story about how flavors helped you now i know a lot of us want to turn around and we want to really be able to look at the fda and give them the finger and we've got all kinds of foul language that we want to use and there was one gentleman that did just that he left a comment uh, it was not polite. He <laughs> used the F-bomb all over the place. Uh, I'm not afraid of the F-word. I love it from time to time. But this guy, when, when you're leaving something for the FDA, you've got to make sure that it is actually polite so that people in the government can read it and not think that it's so crass that they would just throw it out and, and not want to read other comments. So if you would, when you get to put your comment in, turn around. There's only a couple of things. Just be polite. Try to use language that is both appropriate uh, and, and truthful. But the main thing is tell your own story. Tell your story of what kind of flavor did you use to help you get off of combustible tobacco? What flavor helped you stop smoking? That's the biggest part. What helped you stop smoking? And then just take your time. Be polite. Be yourself. And tell your story. It, it, I know that they have, and I did read one thing earlier today. Um, this came both from the head of the DTA as well as uh, the Ohio Vapors Trade Association that they have given a 30-day extension for being able to leave your comments. So if you haven't made it yet, we, we've got an additional 30 days. That'll push it uh, somewhere into June. The The original drop dead date was the 19th of this month. But they'll give us an additional 30 days after that to make sure that we leave our comments. And if you would, please, by all means, stop and leave your comment. 
Very important that we do that. It, it is massively important, not only for the vaping community, but for all the people that haven't even had a chance to try vaping yet to get away from tobacco cigarettes. So, again, stop, take a look at, see what's going on, drop your your own personal story about how you stopped smoking, what flavors you used, things like that. Uh, <laughs> another big thing that's here in the news, and hold on one second. Another large item that is in the news this just happened is San Francisco has created an absolute flavor ban. So if you want to buy any kind of flavored e-liquid or even flavored tobacco, including menthol, you're not going to be doing it in San Francisco. You want to do that, hop on the Golden Gate Bridge, go the other way. I think even south of them, um, they're looking at banning any kind of flavors as well. And I'm like, come on, you have got to be kidding. This is why it, it's hugely important for us as vapers to go out and help educate the public, um, to join our state advocacy groups so that they can help us fight these flavor bans. Uh, New York right now is in a horrible state of looking at a statewide flavor ban. And I know that they're banding together really well up there to be able to fight that. But these things are the, they're just like the, the T21 taxes that are rolling around. They're, they're horrible. And they're going to be continuing to move on and on and on all over the place if, if we don't help educate the public and get them out there so that people can say, yeah, I know what's going on. No, I, I don't want to ban any kind of flavor. Or at least they 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 begin to see our side of things. That that's a a hugely major important one. Hmm. Before I get to Josh at Vaporized, there's one or two other small things. Well, one small thing that just kind of ticks me off, but there was something that was brought up on vaporadio.com this morning and it is this news segment of a health educator talking to her students about the dangers of e-cigarettes. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play the audio from this clip so that you can hear the same thing that I heard and I about flipped. Hold on one second. Do you think that vaping is bad for you? Sandwich between lunch and language arts. Health educator Amy Rosenfeld has one period to hammer home the dangers of vaping. They're not just water vapor. They contain at least 42 chemicals that we know so far. This program by Northern Westchester Hospital is one of the first in the country to teach middle and high school students about e-cigarettes. Are you hoping to scare them a little bit? We definitely are hoping to scare them a little bit. Amy and her team are finding many students don't realize that 99% of vaping products contain nicotine, which is detrimental for a developing brain. They are a generation of guinea pigs. By using these devices, they could become a generation of addicts. Many e-cigarettes come in a rainbow of flavors, making them popular among teens. Gummy bear and mango. Some are so small, students can easily hide them. 18-year-old Michael Maitland was so disturbed by the vaping trend at his high school, he recommended his local hospital address the problem. Do you think a lot of them are addicted? I think a lot of them are addicted. I mean, people have to leave class to go vape in school in the bathrooms. Students say the lessons definitely left a lasting impression. I'm going to stop it right there because I'm telling you, the more that I sit and listen to this, the more pissed I get. I mean, come on. This is doing nothing more than turning around and, and grabbing headline material. Really? There's one thing that I really want to ask when when I see stuff like this coming up on the news. And this went national. This this was all over the place. 
But there's one thing that I really want to ask people, you know, and especially the newscasters, the, the reporters, is, okay, do you understand that that teenager or that minor obtained that thing illegally? Because no vape shop is going to sell it to a minor. So how the hell did they get the product to begin with? How did that happen? And then right behind that, where is, and I want to pick and choose my words very, very carefully. The the minor, if you want to call them a teenager or anything like that, they obtained it illegally. Somebody had to go and get it for them. Now, they get caught with this thing. What do they get? A smack on the wrist, right? Why aren't we doing something about that? Number one, find the jackass that turned around and sold this thing to them. And then number two, the teenager's got to be responsible. Okay, if they're underage, then fine. Find their parents. Write them up. Do something. Because there's no consequence for these teenagers to do this. They think, okay, whatever, you know, and it's not as big an epidemic as anybody is trying to lead you to believe. But it really ticks me off because there's no consequence that's happening behind this. All they want to do is wipe this out and we, the vapors, and the potential smokers now that would like to switch to vaping, it's gone. Okay, so... There's no consequence for the teenagers, but we want 480,000 people a year to die because of smoking. I call bullshit. Plain and simple. I mean, this this is just something that irritates me beyond belief. Oh, the last thing that I want to cover just for a moment is if vaping is so bad... Uh, um. There's this, and and if you're looking on on Facebook, you can see the picture. I'm not even going to bother saying the company's name. Just give them the finger. But this flavored, the gum company that makes nicotine gum came out with an inhaler for what? For inhaling nicotine. And you know that that has to turn into a vapor product. So if vaping is so bad, how come this company is coming out with something like this now? Really? Oh, and there's another one that goes right behind that. Uh, Gentlemen off the West Coast, a lot of you might have heard of him. Some people may not, and in my family probably more than likely is not. Mr. Fig Ramsey pointed out something. On this package, there is nothing that says nicotine is an addictive substance. Wait a minute, isn't that a double standard all by itself? No, I'm not even going to start to rant more about that one. That'll do nothing but make me upset. But anyhow, uh, once again, before I go ahead and give Josh a quick call, if you would make sure that you go to the FDA's gov, gov. website, leave your comment up there. Um, I'll leave a link below in how to get to it. But right now, just it's time... Uh, We need to take a minute and thank our sponsors for doing the Smoke-Free Radio Network. Hey now, this is Dimitri Smoke Free Radio reminding you to please show some love to our wonderful sponsors. Without them, there would be no Smoke Free Radio, and they are as follows. All the way from Florida, Moon Mountain Vapor with locations in Florida and their liquid available for wholesale and retail, moonmountainvapor.com. Some of the best custards and tobaccos on the market from the Brickwells Vaping Company. The 
the lovely Shell with a Vapor Bar. Locations in Texas, Virginia, and West Virginia. And of course, online at thevaporbar.com. And who says you can't have award-winning e-liquid without cartoon characters? That's exactly what you're going to get at theplumeroom.com. And finally, of course, the Vaping Advocate magazine that has generously provided the telephone lines for you to communicate with us. Thank you for your support. And finally, for you, the listener, don't forget to check out the coupons and codes page on Smoke Free Radio. Pick up some e-liquid and save some money. From all of us here at Smoke Free Radio, thank you for your continued support. We've got some awesome sponsors for the show. Uh, Dimitri has done an outstanding job in, in being able to work with these companies and put the entire smoke-free radio network together. And, and again, I'd really like to stop and say thank you to him for giving me the opportunity to bring vaping and the mic to people. And hopefully we can keep it going and keep things moving. Uh, right now, I'm going to turn around and take just a second away from the mic to be able to begin to call Josh at Vaporized Store in Mississippi. So hold on one second. Josh, Josh is How you Mike Peterson with vaping in the mic. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Folks, this is Josh from Vaporized, a store down in Mississippi. Uh, Josh, I appreciate you taking time to take a few minutes out. I know that you're busy down that way. Um, if you would, do me a favor. Tell me. Uh, who it is that you work for, where you're located, and tell me a little bit about your store, if you would. All right. Uh, I work for Vaporized Headquarters in Hattiesburg. Uh, we are one of the biggest shops in, in the area and one of the oldest, actually. been around for, I believe it's four and a half years now. Wow. Yes, indeed. Uh, we've also got a massive selection of cheese from um, anything from <laughs> old school devices, mouth to lung, all the way up to the most recent devices. Fantastic. Hey, curiosity question, before I even begin uh, hitting up some of the questions you and I had spoken about a little bit earlier. Um, do you find yourself okay. selling, or does your store sell more, um, uh, let's call them tanks, you know, a closed system, uh, not a closed okay. system, but a tank versus... Um, mods and RDAs. Is, is, do you find that you sell one more than the other? Uh, it's a little bit split between it and it fluctuates sometimes. We we sometimes have people that are just wanting the the ease of a tank and then other times we have people that are wanting to learn about rebuildables and get into that aspect. Awesome. Yeah, and, and because I've never, I, I don't hang around stores a whole lot, but I go in and I go out, but I'm never really talking to them about uh, what kind of devices they sell or whether they find more tanks or some places might sell more RDAs. I was just curious about that. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do, if you're game for it, I've got a series of things here. Uh, we're going to do round one, which I called Easy Street. And I know I'm going to have to get some music for this stuff so I can bumper it right on in. Uh, but we're going to do round <laughs> one. Oh. <laughs> These these are the easier questions that I would turn around um, and ask stores. And I, I promise I won't pin you to the wall really bad. <laughs> um, the first one, do you have seating available for what you would consider regular clients to come in and hang out? Absolutely. We have an entire lounge area 
Um, and we also have tables that are a little close to where we work for people to come eat lunch, build coils, uh, or just socialize. Hey, do you find that they, they do that more often than not for, for your regulars? It depends on the time of the week and the time of the year, but we can, we can have quite a few people hanging out. Um, and sometimes people watch movies over in the lounge area, just hang out for quite a while. Some people like to wait between classes for school. That, that sounds kind of cool. Uh, I'll hit you with another, another one here. Um, knowing that most, if not all, and I will classify it as good vape shops, uh, but knowing it, most of them carry out good age verification policies. What would you suggest when you hear somebody talking about raising the age to 21? What might you tell that particular person? Uh, I'm just having a hard time hearing you on that question, man. Is that a little bit better there? Uh, a little robotic. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll go back and do this again. Most shops carry out good age verification policies, but if you ran across somebody that was in favor of raising the age to 21, what would you tell that person? I, I, I would completely disagree. Uh, it's, it's been 18 for as long as I can remember. Uh, seems like a suitable age. It's enough for most people to join the Army. Uh, so... To me, it seems good enough to make your own life decisions at that point. Awesome. I, I would very much agree. Um, they try to raise age to 21 all over the places, and a lot of it, it, it takes uh, state advocacies uh, a lot of time and effort to go and stamp out any kind of T21 measures or anything like that. Here's, yep. here's another one here for you. Um, does your store ever do any kind of fundraisers for either local or national events? Oh, we actually have. We've done quite a few fundraisers for Mississippi's Vaping Advocacy Association, a.k.a. the MSVAA. Um, we've done personal ones for friends of the shop, families of the shop. Uh, we recently did one for a family that unfortunately had their house burned down. Uh, that was actually not at this location. That was our Meridian chapter. Now, that's fantastic. How how did things turn out? And is that family doing better, I hope? Uh, absolutely. We, we I believe it was actually a very good turnout. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it up that way as much as I would have loved to. Uh, but I hear that it was actually a really good turnout. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Um, here's another one for you. It. What is one thing that you might say to someone who is thinking about or might be ready to try to switch from combustible tobacco or, or smoking, and they were ready to try a vapor product? What is something that you might say to them that might either encourage them or help them make that decision? Uh, I would I would tell them that they're they're aiming in the right direction first off to try to get away from the combustibles. Um, I would tell them also to try their best to not overcomplicate things. That's something I see daily, that people tend to overcomplicate what vaping is um, and what it's all about. And try to find facts on what they're actually hearing, not necessarily just propaganda that may come across social media. I'm, I'm much the same. I, th I think very much the same. I, I try not to be too, too aggressive with things that they're doing, but try to find them something that... Uh, is an easy starting point for them but yeah very much i i, I would I encourage almost I, I try to to find or tell them about products that might be a little bit easier to work with uh something not complicated and Absolutely. definitely not not a high-end mod or an rda or anything like that oh no it, it, people should always start on, out on uh, what i consider to be a ground level system something that is it's easy enough for them to actually understand what vaping is all about, what it's going to take for them to change coils, fill their own tanks, and and swap things in and out between. Because they, they quickly understand that they're going to start changing flavors quite often because uh, no one finds the perfect one the first go around. Um, and they everyone generally understands that at some point they'll want to move higher than where they're at at the moment and get a, a higher quality device maybe. 
So you would you would gradually kind of work them up the up the ladder from something simpler, and as their capabilities increased or their taste increased, that they could do something better than that. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Josh, we're going to take a minute. We're going to move right into round two. This is round two. It's called Let's Get Serious. These are the little bit of a harder-hitting kind of question. And and there's no right or wrong answer to any of these. Don't, don't try to think about it, that at all. Um, the first one that I want to ask you, do you think that there should be some kind of safety introduction course or something similar for first-time customers if they're going to purchase a pure mechanical device? Oh, absolutely. We actually do that here at the shop. Uh, we will question people what their knowledge base is on Ohm's Law and coil building and battery safety especially because it's, it's been too many situations on social media that we've seen that that's the case is that people did not know what they were doing when they purchased a mechanical device. And not only does it hurt that person, it hurts the industry as a whole when something bad does happen from a mechanical device. I agree with that, and battery safety being one of the biggest things. Um, when you find people purchasing a mechanical kind of device, is there a particular one that they seem to start out with, or is it just almost like a uh, and anything anything kind of goes? It's a little bit of everything, honestly. It it's more because of when people first come in, mechanical mods tend to catch the eye a little quicker than traditional devices. They're, they tend to be metallic of nature and very shiny. Uh, so they catch the eye a lot faster than maybe uh, just an all-black device. And do you find yourself going through more of the square, like a box mod, uh, like a mad modder device, or more towards a tube mech? More towards a tube, just because of the size. And I, that's one thing I have to clarify for people, though, with mech mods, they, they may appear to be small and more pocket-friendly, although they quickly seem to realize that they're going to have to carry around quite a few batteries throughout their day, so it's not necessarily a, a relief on the pocket space. Very, very true. Here, here's another kind of question for you. Um, okay. What are your thoughts about a shop belonging to a state advocacy group? You, as you mentioned, MSVAA earlier. Uh, thoughts on it? Ed, could you elaborate the question a bit? Um, if if I were to, and I've walked into a shop, and I, I'm trying not to pass along too much of my own personal angst on this, but okay, you know, let's say you ran into somebody and they began a conversation about state advocacy, ad, advocacy groups. Good God, <laughs> my mouth is going to run <laughs> away. But if you ran into a conversation like that, would you tell them that a store should belong to, or would you kind of shy away from it? I believe that, that every shop should belong to some sort of advocacy association. Uh, it, to me, if, if a shop isn't part of some sort of advocacy, it's the, the portrayal would be that they're, they're not really in it for the long haul. They're not really in it for the industry. They're in it just, just for themselves. I would agree, and I've run across more stores than I can think of that I, I've heard probably half the reasons that are out there why they don't belong to their their state advocacy group or one reason or another. But I'm I'm very much for I'm pro pro state advocacy groups. That is something that needs to happen. Um, I'm going to ask you one more quick question Absolutely. on on a serious kind of okay. note. It, in just very recent news, they've come across with the flavor ban in San Francisco. In your yes. thinking, how how is that going to affect not only stores, like shops in the area, but how is that going to affect the consumer? Uh, quite honestly, I think it's going to put quite a damper on what vaping has to offer to people. Because most of the attraction tends to be uh, the flavor opportunities that people can have. And to, to elaborate on that, I've actually had quite a few people that they didn't start vaping necessarily just to quit smoking. It, some people use it for 
both smoking and a sort of dietary option. That way they don't snack so much on things. And if, if there's not those flavors available for people, then it it definitely makes it a, a bit of a dull industry. And it brings us back to the days of cigalites where all we have is menthol and tobacco. Yeah, if they, they were to take away the flavoring... And, and it's what they've done in San Francisco is they have now banned flavors, and that goes as, even as as far as banning menthol cigarettes, menthol. The only thing that's left on a shelf in any shop is going to be a tobacco flavor product. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think a store can stay open on just a tobacco product. Do you? Absolutely not. Uh, the, the only way I can see anyone surviving off of that is just above and beyond 200% customer service. Uh, and even even with that, people still want their flavor options, and they're going to be diverted to some, some other source. Yeah, it looks like for San Francisco, they're going to be driving out of town in order to be able to get any of that. Yes. Awesome. All right, Josh, we're going to take one more trip, and this time into round three, and it is called It's WTF Time, and I know everybody knows what WTF stands for. I'll try not to drop the F-bomb just yet. <laughs> Almost did it earlier, but this is just, yep. I, I, I want to be able to say, here's a question that is just absurd. <laughs> we'll put it that way, okay? <laughs> Are you ready? All right. All right. If there was a cloud comp between Snoop Dogg and Steven Tyler, who do you think would win? I would have to go with Steven Tyler. Really? Why would you say Steven Tyler? Better lung capacity? Absolutely, and he happens to be one of my favorite singers. (laughs) (laughs) Good answer. I'm going to ask you one more, Timbo, because I, I thought that this was intriguing. If people lived on the moon and they were vaping up on the moon and they had a cloud comp up on the moon, how would they judge the winner? Would they do it by density of the cloud, the furthest cloud, or hang time? I would probably have to go with density. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's just one of those crazy kinds of questions just to make people go, huh, scratch their head. Well, Josh, uh, <laughs> tell me, if you would, yep. does your store have online capability? And if so, what what is your online presence? Uh, let people know so they might be able to jump in and check you out. Okay. Uh, the online store is going to be myvaporize.com. Um, they can also contact us via Facebook. Uh, we tend to respond pretty quickly through there if they have any questions about anything. Um, but absolutely, we have quite a few of our house juices on there, and we have some third-party juices on our, our web store. Fantastic. Josh, I, I know that things are picking up and becoming a little bit busier down there. Uh, I hear some people running around in the background. I appreciate you taking time yep. to... Uh, stop and say hey and talk on the phone for a few minutes. Uh, I, seriously, I appreciate that. No problem at all, man. All right. Folks, at Josh with Vaporized down in Mississippi. If you have any kinds of questions, he gave you the information for the store. Uh, go and check them out and see what's going on. Josh, I'm sure that I will talk to you again some other time. All right? All right. Sounds good, man. All right. Have a great night. YouTube. That's Josh from Vaporized down in Mississippi. Nice guy. Seriously nice guy. I didn't want to put him on the spot. And I'm I, that's not what I'm here for. I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot for doing something. Uh, I could nail him to the wall, but then after about, oh, I don't know, two weeks... Nobody would be listening to the show, and and nobody would be doing much with the show. <laughs> so we would be dead right there off the bat. Uh, I know that Bill Tarling had left a, a comment here, and I'm just now being able to get to it from the Facebook Live side of things. 
And, and for the people that are just listening through a, a podcast, Bill says a lot of states aren't even willing to ch- charge the kids for using the e-cigs. They say it might hurt their future if charged. Really? I, I, ne- I guess I never thought of it that way. But here again, I, I, I run right back to that for a minute and I say consequence. And, and where is the consequence for all of that going to be going to? That That just... That one just drove me right up the wall. Well, folks, I know that we have listener lines, and those are provided by the the vaping advocate. Vaping, my God, I am having a difficult time with that word tonight. The vaping advocate magazine are the people that are sponsoring the listener line. And if you want to call in, I'll, I'll try to fit you in on the show for a minute. the The listener call in line is 215-383-5752. Again, you call in, we can talk for a minute and hang out. Uh, It's 215-383-5752. Next week, I'll try to get some kind of a a nice picture to throw up here, a nice little graphic. Uh, It's going to take me a few weeks to get everything ironed out and working well. And hopefully we can all hang out for the next couple of weeks as we go along. There's there's a couple other things that I, I want to touch base on, and and I do I, I seriously want to go back, and I know that I'm I'm harping on it, but please by all means go hit the the FDA's website for the A N P R M, and, and let's see if we can drive that number up. It would be nice if we could see something that was hitting into the 60,000 kind of standpoint. Uh, I would love to be able to see those. That that would be a, a very solid representation of everything that we have going on. And I, I know I'm not, by no means am I the only one that's out there. I, I've heard from all over the place, uh, Smoke Free Radio here, Dimitri has been... Talking about it, uh, you go to VapeRadio.com. They they definitely have been all over the place. You've got other reviewers, other people that are all hopping on top of this and saying, hey, but I tell you what, we've got a call here in the listener line. I'm going to see if I can connect to it real quick. Hey, Mike. Bill Darling here. Bill, how are you doing, sir? I wanted to call in and say congrats on the first show. It's going great so far. I appreciate that and very want much. I want to toss in a quick thing uh, about the uh, tobacco 21. Yeah, a lot of the states, and this is what shocked me, a lot of the legislators are going, well, we don't want to charge the kids because that's going to go on their record and might affect their future. And I agree 100%. If there are no consequences, they're already ignoring the 18-year-old um, limit for having uh, tobacco products and so forth. So just raising the age, if there's no consequences, there's no reason for them to suddenly go, oh, my God, it's raised up to 21. I guess we better start obeying the law that we've ignored all this time. Without the consequences, they don't even have to bother. Yeah. So legislators just go, well, that shop's uh, it's not selling it to them, but... We can't find the people that they're getting it from. We don't want to go after the kids uh, who are breaking the law, so let's charge the shops that are obeying the law and blame them because that's the easiest way to (laughs) regulate it. It is. The minute that you see any minor, and and I'll phrase them as a minor, whether they're teenage or if they are even 20 in some of the places that have now passed a T21, you know, but anybody that's underage has uh, a mod, a jewel, or whatever, uh, they have no consequence. They get a slap on the wrist, if that, and, and they're set loose. They don't even and get that know. in a lot of the places. Yeah, they, they, they don't and, even get that. And the way and the way I look at it is, uh, starting at about age 16, you're supposedly old enough to start being able to drive. By 18, you're considered a legal adult, where if you sign a contract... That is legally binding because you're of sound mind to make your own decisions. You're able to go to war, not be recruited for that. Uh, you're, 
you vote, you have all the taxes, yet they say you're a legal adult, but you're you're only a kid as far as vaping is concerned. So you're not good. You're not old enough for that. So it's like really bizarre. It it is because it makes me, oh. Like you and like a lot of other people, it, it, it's not only bizarre, it, it absolutely infuriates me because they have and nothing to make them stop. And this, I you're don't know if you're on... You're also smoking for an extra three years. It, it does. And that's what I tried to tell somebody the other day for the places that are passing T21. And you had somebody that was smoking at 18 and they were thinking about changing to vapor, you know, to migrate over and have a vapor product instead of combustible tobacco. Now they're screwed. Now what are they going to do? And think, you know? of, and think of San Francisco. Once you get rid of the flavors, you have, what, maybe five bottles of juice that you can sell people. That's not enough to keep any store open. But even more important, uh, the smoking rates for teens and youth have gone down. Uh, they're saying, well, because they've switched to vaping, and so they're counting that as tobacco product, even though it doesn't contain tobacco, and that way they can keep their figures up and say, this is why we have to go after these products. But when you think about it, if if shops in San Francisco have to close down and the teens will either have to get whatever supplies they want through the back alleys or wherever they can get it, or they're going to start saying, well, hey, vaping's not available. Let's go back to smoking. And so you're going to climb the rate back up for uh, teen smoking. Yeah, and that's that's what everybody wants. That, that's a whole nother topic that you and I could sit and probably chew on for hours is the, you know, let's save the kids and all of that. We, we won't even get into that yet. But there is something, since I have you on the phone, if you have a minute, I would love to ask you sure. because you, you're very cognizant and aware of this topic. And it's a lot of people that are not smokers. They don't vape. They, they're just out there. Um but they don't know what the MSA, Master Settlement Agreement, is. Well, actually, one you should really get on is uh, Dimmy because he can take that thing completely uh, apart. But I believe you're – are you talking about the um, uh, tobacco companies where they had to pay uh, the ver- certain various states X amount of uh, money and- to sort of cover the health – health um, damages that they've done. And what a lot of the states did was, instead of taking um, the ongoing sum, the tobacco companies smartly offered, tell you what, we'll give you a big lump sum right now, and then you take it over. And the, a lot of the states figured, hey, this is great. We've got our budget covered and everything else. But then when the time came where that period expired and the states had to start covering it themselves, it's at the point now where if people stop smoking in some states like California and New York, they would go bankrupt. Yeah, they turn around and they... Those, those states bring in over h- hundreds of millions to billion dollars in tobacco taxes a year. And very little of that goes back to health um, benefits or reductions or health care or anything else. That's going to their budgets. So if you're a state and you're suddenly realizing, damn, everyone's stopping smoking... What do we do? We're losing this money. So they say, well, we'll raise the tax up and we'll raise the cost up. And, well, that brings in a bit of immediate money, but the smoking levels keep going down, and they're going, we're running out of our budget money. So we need people smoking again. We can't lose that money. Yep, and that's what I try to to tell people when they are talking about taxes Ask, and I ask people, okay, if they're raising taxes in one place, it means they're losing taxes somewhere else. So where are they actually losing the money from? And that's when we get into the MSA and they begin to open their eyes and, and really see what their state has done in mishandling, misappropriation, and Lord knows what else. Exactly. And most people don't realize if those states don't or can't collect enough tobacco tax they will quite literally go bankrupt. That's why they want to keep going with the smoking. Yeah, it, it just turns around and makes everybody that's a smoker the newest commodity to be sold. 
Oh, exactly. The smokers have been the commodity and the scapegoat for a long time. Demonize them, and they make it, oh, we'll get them to stop smoking. Well, a person doesn't just go, oh, well, it's going to cost me an extra dollars. I guess I'll just quit right now. That's not how the addiction works. And what people also have to realize, there's a difference between the cigarette uh, addiction and what's being said about tobacco um, or nicotine by itself. The nicotine by itself, there have been studies done, and they haven't found it overly addictive. It does have an addictiveness to it, but it's not the absolute piece that does it. And there's a film called um, Merchants of Doubt, and they actually talk about it where the tobacco companies realized back in the um, late 50s that our nicotine isn't hooking the smokers enough to keep them onto our brand. And that's why they brought in the chemists and the scientists to add in all the boosters. Like, that's why you have all those 4,000 to 7,000 chemicals. Wow. And a lot of those chemicals are still in the heat, not burn. But it's not the nicotine itself. That, that was the reason. The reason that nicotine was picked was that's the easiest thing for people to associate to, rather than all these scientific and Latin names and everything. Say nicotine, and people go, oh, okay, yeah, we can understand what that is. That's why it was demonized. But in the, in the level of addictiveness, it's actually way, way near the bottom of the list compared to the other chemicals and their addictiveness. But, yeah, it's those boosters in the tobacco nicotine that have made it as strong. As a matter of fact, a lot of the tobacco companies with their heat not burn products have gone into hearings and said, we aren't worried about losing our smokers because we use the same nicotine and same type of formula in our heat not burn. So we're going to have that addictiveness anyhow. Whereas with the um, e-liquid uh, vapor products, the EVPs, the nicotine is, one, it's not raw nicotine. It's diluted to begin with. Then when you get into the e-juice itself, again, it's further diluted. So your concentration levels are actually far below anything else, but they're also, because they don't have those boosters weighing it down, they also get absorbed through the mouth yep. very quickly. It takes longer for it to reach the brain, so it's not as fast a hit as a cigarette, which is a problem a lot of smokers have with the conversion is that slight delay. But because it absorbs um, differently and cleaner, you haven't got it all, all like crap hanging out in your lungs. And that's, a part, that's something that the legislators won't even look at. They just assume, oh, nicotine is nicotine, whether it's smoking, whether it's vaping. And that's why a lot of states, New Jersey just passed a um, law banning it in public on beaches and uh, more parks and so forth, and they refer to them as electronic smoking devices. Whereas if you look at the definition of smoking, we have nothing to do with smoking. No. We do not. The vaping industry doesn't have anything to do with smoking. And as a matter of fact, for, for people that may not really know, uh, vaping, the industry got thrown together and unfortunately thrown under the bus and put into a tobacco category simply because it was easier for the government to not only define what our products are, but more importantly, to regulate it. To regulate it, to class any, now that we're in the... Um Tobacco Control Act, any state or local area can say, oh, you're in the tobacco, so therefore we can charge you tobacco rates or like tobacco. Uh, you're in tobacco, we can put you into Clean Air Act or Fresh Air Acts or any of those acts whatsoever. You're in tobacco, we can classify you the same as smoking and therefore restrict you from all these areas. You're in tobacco, we can ban you the same way and same areas we want to ban tobacco. And that's exactly what they've done is they've gone through how many different places now and hit a Clean Air Act is what they call it around here. Uh, even locally in the city where uh, just right next to me, a small city in here in Ohio, they had turned around and now they, they don't allow any kind of vaping product for use in public parks. And and I want to yeah, ask them, it, it, do, you, do you folks understand that second-hand vape, which is not a thing. Do you even understand how little to negligible effect it has on a second person? And, and I, I really don't believe that they would get it. And, and, no, the studies have been done, and I'm trying to remember the exact figure because it's from about two years ago, but they'd measured the nicotine exhale back when um, 
there were like the uh, low wattage devices uh, about two or three years ago and using 18 milligram nicotine and I think it was something like 0.006% if I'm correct. I might be wrong in that figure, but I think it was 0.006% of the nicotine was exhaled and dispersed almost immediately. Wow. But again, what they look at is, oh, here's this toxic cloud. Um, it's going to kill everybody. It's even bigger than the smoke coming out of a cigarette. Yeah. So it must be bad. And that and that's where the rhetoric sort of comes in. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it is one one side effect of people that, um, and, and I've heard them called enthusiasts when you get into the, the higher uh, RDAs, which is a rebuildable device, or you get into something that has a lot of power to it. It, it will produce a lot of of vapor on an exhale and there are it, many people it that can look very intimidating to somebody who doesn't know what vaping is oh it, to does. Them it would just look like you're blowing this huge nox, noxious toxic cloud towards them and uh now where i would like to, where i have no problem with it being restricted is let's say you have a scent free area like some hospital areas um or some uh when you go to uh, the medical labs and so on they have scent sensitive people so I have no problem with it kind of not being used there. As a matter of fact, that's where I think it should not be used. But, yeah, they basically want to classify it based on appearance without having to understand it. And you can't blame them because if, if you've never – if you had nothing to do with vaping and you were just walking down the street and saw this guy walking by with a cigarette and a little puffs of smoke, you go, oh, God, that's annoying. Then you see a guy behind him blowing a giant cloud of stuff. In this case, oh, my God, those things must be putting out 100 times much more even though it's not even the same stuff. Yeah, it, it's not. It, you walk by somebody that's vaping. Uh, there was a, a joke that was running around on Facebook for a little while. It, it said, you know, vapors really make me angry because you see these big burly guys standing outside vaping and you walk by and you smell like cinnamon rolls and strawberry and damn it, now they made me hungry. Yeah, would you rather they smell like uh, dirty ashtrays? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now, Bill, let me ask you one quick thing before our, our evening might run out. Um, so people can understand, you're, you're up in Canada. Where about in Canada are you? I'm on Vancouver Island, so not even on the mainland. So very, very west coast. Okay. Um, way, way above California. Just on, the, just on the other side of the Seattle border is um, Vancouver, and I'm a little further west, um, partway into the ocean on a little island, Vancouver Island. Nice. Now, this is just so people can have an understanding about you. Bill runs a, a page called Vape Distortion, and he puts out an awful lot of links to news and news sites. Again, Vape Distortion on Facebook if you're looking for more information. But here's, here's the, the quizzical thing. Folks, Bill doesn't own a store. He doesn't own a juice line. He is a vapor, and he has an, an, a passion for helping people get out there and understand what vaping actually is. He's trying to educate people. He doesn't even have a stake in the game. He just likes to vape. Now, no. let me ask you. My, my so, motivation, in all seriousness, I am scared to death that with regulations and so forth, I'm going to be pushed back to smoking. That That is my whole fear, and that's why I watch things worldwide. And on the Facebook page, I don't really go into – it's not really for open discussion, but what I try and do is find any news pieces on different issues across the world that people might find is worthwhile topic on their own uh, boards and their own forums and their own pages uh, to discuss with their people. So I just try and keep track of things for people, and that's it. But, no, I, I have no financial ties whatsoever to the industry. That was I just try and help out where I can because this basically, this has saved me in more ways than you can understand. I was a, smoke, I was a heavy smoker for about 37 years. Um, it was about two to two and a half packs a day. I usually pick the strongest tar and nicotine level cigarettes, the, the harshest ones I could find. I always uh, liked best. I went through the patches, I went through the gums, I went through the lozenges, I went through the, um, the inhalers, I went through the Champex, I went through other medication, I went through acupuncture, and I went through two sessions of laser therapy. 
Wow. I went tried cold turkey. Nothing worked for me. When I started vaping, I had spent about two weeks online and found a nice little, it was uh, the... 90 um, seconds. Uh, an ego style, and I figured, well, let me try that. When I went to get it, I had two packs of open cigarettes with me. As a matter of fact, that was February 6, uh, 2013, uh, was it 2013 or 2014. I still have the two packs of smokes untouched in my desk drawer right beside me that I keep with me. I can pull them out and sniff them. I can handle them. No interest in them. But I hadn't expected to quit vaping or quit smoking. As a matter of fact, I had no intentions of stopping 60 smoking. seconds. I just wanted to think if I could talk myself into replacing every fifth cigarette with a vape and somehow convince myself that was good enough, that would save me a little bit of money. I had no expectation. I had long given up from smoking. What I hadn't counted on was I was lucky. I went to, I had found a good juice that was right for me right from the beginning. The devices were right for me. They were matched well for me. And from my very first vape, I would never expected it, but I'd never had another cigarette ever since then. I never even had a puff of a cigarette since then. Wow. So I was one of the lucky ones that worked for me instantly. Wow. And the difference in my health, I'd been through a, a, a mill accident when I was working at a lumber mill and had a lung full of uh, cedar dust, so I had uh, breathing issues. Um, at one point, I was um, Ten uh, pre-diabetic, seconds. and the doctor said, you've got to change your whole diet. Now, my, my food bill at the dollar store for candy used to be about $90 a month. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love I love my candy, but he said you have to change your diet and drastically, and went back a couple of weeks later. He goes, well, your numbers are down, but how did you change your diet so easy? I said I've still got my flavors in. I've got my root beers, my black licorice, my lemon meringue pies, my pineapples, my green mints, in my vape juices. So I didn't really miss it that much, and so he he continuously checked my sugar levels and everything. And then they, they cleared up, and he said, this is actually doing a hell of a lot for you. And he checked my lung capacity, and he goes, your breathing's better than normal. Wow. So so for me, it made a hell of a difference. Bill, that's and outstanding. As well, one, other, one little aspect, which um, is never really brought up, but I'm also autistic with Asperger's. And that's why, like for me, I used to go through a cigarette in about a minute and a half, it wasn't so much for the cigarette. It was more that was my focus that took away my anxiety. It gave me something to concentrate on, the actual physical actions and seeing the smoke coming out sort of thing. It gave me a, a focus to distract me. And with the vaping, it's the same sort of thing, but now without all the extra chemicals. And so I I started at a 24-milligram um, e-liquid. I, now my personal preference is zero. I don't... It doesn't matter if I have some with nicotine once in a while, if that's all that's available in that flavor. It doesn't give me any urges again, but it keeps me away from smoking. And that's why I got involved is because I'm terrified of being pushed back because of regulations. Huh? Anything that helps it, it that, that is amazing. And I'm glad that you were able to relate that to people so they can hear. Here's a guy that has absolutely nothing to do with the industry. And yet he is one of the, the larger advocates that are out there. Uh, Bill, that's just fantastic. Uh, the way I look at it, there's so many people doing a lot of good work. There's yourself, there's Dimmy, there's Fig, there's so many people out there. Those are the ones who need the credit. All I can do is just try and help out in my little bit. If I can find some information that's of use to somebody, great, I'm happy. If it keeps somebody off smoking, that is a huge gain. Because one thing people don't realize Everyone's saying, oh, we have to protect the youth, have to protect the youth. Vapors, the last thing we want any kid to ever go through is the hell that we went through when we went, got on, hooked on smoking when we were young. Boy, there ain't we no lie right there. We don't want any kid to ever go through that because we know how hellish it was to get away from the smoking afterwards. Yep. And that's why, no, these products are not targeted to get kids smoking that's the last thing any vapor wants and that's why we are so passionate about our vaping i i agree with you 100 percent there there's not any vapor that i know that wants to see a kid running around with any kind of vape product in their hand we 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 work very diligently as an industry overall to make sure that they are only sold to adults and primarily to people to get them to stop smoking that's the whole intent and the whole thing about 
the whole thing about gateway, here's my easy solution that I always look at it. This banana cream pie vape tasted so satisfying and delicious that now I have a sudden urge to lick a dirty ashtray. <laughs> and that's exactly what they're trying to say would be the gateway. You do not go from a root beer, a pineapple, a lemon meringue pie to wanting to go to something that tastes... Now, we, when we smoked, we thought, hey, smoking tastes great. But once we got off it and our taste buds came back thanks to vaping, we realized that, oh, my God, how did I ever <laughs> abide it, by that? It turns into and a that's really the whole bad thing. thing. It, it's not a gateway because you're not going to go from a juicy steak to eating something out of the toilet. Yeah, there ain't no lie in that. Well, Bill, I tell you what, we're, we're going to go ahead and wrap it wonderful, up Wonderful, great first show. Hey, I really appreciate so you calling the in. I, I appreciate that. Uh, again, people, if you get a chance, Vape Distortion group on Facebook, uh, Bill puts out some some fantastic material. Go ahead and read through it. Uh, educate yourself or use it to tell other people. Bill, thank you very much for calling this evening. I appreciate it. Much appreciated, Mike. Have a great night. I'm going to. You do the same. Folks, that brings us right, actually, a few minutes past the hour. Uh, just flat out awesome to be able to talk with Bill Tarling for a few minutes again up in Canada to give a, a different perspective other than my own. I, I appreciate everybody taking the time joining me for an hour of vaping in the mic. Um, again, Josh from the Vaporized Network, Vaporized Stores in Mississippi. If you can, give them a check, see what they've got going on. Uh, otherwise, I will be here again next Thursday at 7 p.m. Exclusively on the Smoke Free Radio Network. That, that's who's bringing all of this to you right here. So until next Thursday, I'll see you guys later.